Are you leading a team while managing a chronic illness? If you or anyone you know is in that situation, this interview is for you. Hey everybody, I'm Christina Cummins, creator of the Turnover Solutions Leadership Program. And in this next interview of the Elevate Female Leadership Series, Monica Roberts, a dedicated and long-term leader in the mental health and addictions realm, shares with us her journey of leading teams while discovering and then managing that she has a chronic illness. As always, pull up your office chair, grab your cup of tea. I'll see you there. Hi, everybody. Today, we are joined by Monica Roberts, a licensed professional counselor with a long history of directing social service and mental health programs. Hey, Monica. Hi, how are you doing, Christina? I'm pretty good. I have a little bit of a cold and we might get some background noise, but I'm doing pretty good. How are you? <laughs> Understandable. Hope you feel better. Thanks. Thanks. You've shared with me that you have a chronic long-term health condition. And I'm hoping that we could drive, dive right into the vulnerable stuff here of how you've managed to balance taking care of yourself while being a leader and directing teams in one of the most stressful fields there is. So this is a huge question to start off with, but how do you balance that? That one is, is a great question. And thank you for, for bringing that up, Christina. I think, you know, it is very challenging when you, it's challenging enough to be a leader in this field, right? And leading uh, mental health and substance abuse um, teams and organizations. When you add in a chronic, you know, medical condition, it, it adds to that. Um, I have um, a history of psoriatic arthritis. I was not diagnosed that long ago. It was only in 2020 um, that I was oh. diagnosed. My mom has rheumatoid arthritis. Um, she's had that for many years. So I'm, I was familiar with it. So when I'm started getting sick um, in 2020, I kind of recognized the symptoms and the signs and what, knew that I needed to make an appointment with a rheumatologist and, and get tested. Um, and, you know, what's great was having a wonderful doctor, a wonderful team, um, but it can be really challenging to manage my chronic um, uh, medical condition and be a leader right in the field. Um, and so I really, you know, try to practice as much as possible. I know it's very easy to say and hard to do, but self-care mm -hmm. is so important to me. Um, I'm a mom of three young kids. So that also adds in, you know, a different um, aspect to it. It, it. it can be hard to add in that self-care piece, but just knowing kind of where my limitations are with pain or with some of my inflammatory conditions and symptoms that I'm feeling, um, and making sure that I'm taking care of myself. Because if I'm not taking care of myself, I'm not really gonna be able to take care of my teams and um, patients and be there um, in, in the, the the capacity of being a, a true leader. Um, so I've learned how to balance and manage taking care of myself um, to be able to be there as a leader. Going back to 2020, when you were first dealing with these symptoms and trying to figure out what was going on, what was work life like as you were experiencing that? Yeah, it was, um, at first it was very, um, very concerning, very scary, um, very, um, I was unsure if I was going to be able to continue in a leadership capacity um, and doing the job duties that I was doing because I was in so much pain, um, just my whole body, I, I felt, you know, very old, much older than my age. Um, and I would get up in the morning, just be in so much pain and walking very slowly. And, um, I was like, how, how am I going to be able to, you know, function and, and, you know, be the leader that I know that I can be when I'm in so much pain and I'm, I'm not sure that I can make it through the day. Um, so I would just, um, I really worked on at that time, you know, making sure that I got in to see a doctor as soon as I could um, to be able to get the, the proper testing and assessment for what was going on. Um, and, you know, really looking at like, if, if I need to take some time, um, you know, if there was a bad day, I would, I would utilize that PTO and say, I'm, I'm just mm -hmm. not having a good day today. And I'm not sure that I'm going to be 100% there. Um, but it, it would kind of, it, it would just depend on the day. And I'd really have to take a look at, you know, certain job duties of like, I wasn't able to walk around a lot. Um, but I could get things done more in a sitting position more on the computer, like, what could I do? How can I manage and, um, you know, work around certain things so that I can get my job done before I was able to be properly diagnosed and given the medications that I needed. Did you disclose to anyone at work what was going on? I would imagine there would be questions. So I, I'm unfortunately really good at hiding. Um, and that's been a problem, right. That's been a problem, you know, is that I, I didn't want to let, let many people know, you know, what was going on because I, I was afraid of like how people would view me like, oh my gosh, like, are you, are you able to do this job? Are you, you know, I, I was feeling 
so worried about how I would be perceived um, in the field and as a leader and as somebody that like, you know, needed to be there for my team um, until it got to the point of like, you know, I remember one day sitting and trying to lead a supervision and my hand had swollen up so much. Like I couldn't even put my ring on my hand and it was like in so much pain. And I, like, I couldn't hide that anymore. My hand looked really bad. Um, and so I had to disclose it to my team and I disclosed it to my boss at the time, like, this is what I'm going through. I have an appointment scheduled. I'm pretty sure this is what's going on. Um, and so that it, it was a, such a freeing feeling of just being open and finally like not like trying to hide it and pretend I was fine when I wasn't. Um, which I think sometimes, you know, us women in leadership do, we, we learn how to like suck it up, swallow, like, let's just keep going, keep going, keep moving. But sometimes there's a, there's a power and there's a freedom in being open with your, with your vulnerabilities and saying like, Hey, you know what, this is what I'm going through. And, you're, and what I found was not only were my supervisors so understanding of it and so willing to help with anything that I needed, but my team was too. They were very compassionate and, you know, understanding that I, I was going through something and that I would need um, their support and need them to pull together when I wasn't able to. Um, and and they did. And they were wonderful, all of them. It's, I, I'm so happy to hear that it was freeing to share. Um I, I live with a chronic physical condition too. And for years, I got used to telling clients up front, hey, you're going to notice that some days I limp or I can't use one arm or the other and it's okay. I'm okay. I just have this condition. So you're going to notice it. And it was, what I found was it was freeing for my clients because yes. they would tell me later, like, oh yeah, I, I actually was really curious about what was going on, but I didn't want to ask because I didn't want to make you uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And once I was able to just put it out there of this is something that you're going to notice with me, I shed the light on it. As one of my mentors used to say, it lost its power of being embarrassing or heavy or scary. I fully agree with you, Christina. And also I, I noticed it was freeing for my staff um, and um, some clients because because some of them were also dealing with their own chronic conditions that they hadn't shared. And so I had a couple of staff that were like, well, actually, you know, I have arthritis or I have this, right? I have that, I'm going through that. And like, it, it kind of became freeing for, for, you know, both of us to be able to say like, yeah, today's a bad pain day or today, you know, I'm struggling a little bit to walk, but we're going to get through this. We're going to help each other out. Um, so I think that can be really also a, a, a very positive thing with being open and vulnerable and sharing. How, how did you manage your home life while you were dealing with this? Well, thankfully I have an amazing husband um, who, you know, really can pick up the slack. He's a, um, he's been a stay-at-home dad um, throughout their lives. And so he's managed the household. He's managed, um, you know, taking care of them and taking them to school, um, doctor's appointments, all, all the extracurriculars, um, cooking, cleaning. And so when I have been ill um, due to my chronic condition, he stepped up to the plate and really, you know, been been there for the kids. But it, it definitely took a toll on me as a mom too, because there were days that I felt like, you know, I can't fully give myself to my kids and I don't want to be that mom that's laying in bed. You know, I, I want to be active with them. I want to be there with them. Um, and so, yeah, that, that was really hard in those early days. Um, especially not like being fully diagnosed yet and not having medications yet. Um, but my husband and my family, I have a wonderful family that was really willing to help out and, um, and be there uh, when I, when I could be 100%. Mm, yeah. For a time in my, uh, in my parenting, there was a year where I really had a hard time walking and I couldn't play on playground equipment. I couldn't even walk five minutes to the playground, let alone play on the equipment. And I had so much mom guilt so much. about yeah. not being able to engage in play with yeah. my kids. Um, and I love meeting and talking with people that have these chronic conditions that are also living the life of leader, living the life of mother, living the life of partner because it kind of does bleed into all sectors of your life when you're having a bad flare up. Absolutely. The, the mom guilt is real. I mean, for sure. We have so much mom guilt as working moms, you know, as leaders in the field, like, are we there enough for our kids? And then we have a chronic illness to, to, you know, on top of that. And it's like, I'm not even able to be there for my kids or my team. You know, I can't, I can't be my, my true self my, that I know that I can be. And there's just so much guilt in that. Um, so it's wonderful to talk I think just like we're doing right now, just finding other support, finding people that are going through similar things to understand that like, it's real, it's valid, you're not alone, and you can get through it. 
Do you think that going through this journey with your chronic illness has changed you as a leader in the workplace? Absolutely. I have more, um, I mean, not, obviously I've always had compassion and empathy for people with chronic illnesses. I, I'm a mental health professional. I deal with chronic mental health illnesses as well as chronic medical conditions that overlap. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of, um, co-occurring, um, but just going through it myself, I have, I have just more of an inside um, feeling about it that like now I understand a little bit more. Now I can actually put myself in some of their shoes and, you know, dealing with chronic pain issues. I remember at the time I was working in a um, opioid treatment facility as a leader, as a program director, and we did oh, yeah. um, MAT, um, so methadone and suboxone, Vivitrol for patients that were going through opioid dependence. And um, and a lot of our patients were pain um, patients, you know, that had, had sure. were going through chronic pain. Um, and I remember thinking like, wow, okay, I... Like I, I see it from such a different perspective, like as a patient perspective, like I didn't thankfully develop any, you know, painkiller dependence, but I, that the pain, the chronic pain that they were experiencing, I could understand like what that feels like and how difficult that is to manage it. And like how easily someone could go down that road of addiction to pain medication, because you just want to make that feeling go away. I, I agree with you. If someone came along and said, hey, take this pill and then you'll be able to play with your kids and engage in life and, and go to work and do all of the tasks like you're like you want to, I would want to take that pill. Exactly. Now, I was also really lucky in having physicians that knew clearly with a chronic condition like mine, opioids were not the answer in any way. And honestly, they weren't nearly as effective as other medications and other lifestyle um changes or implementations. Um, but I, I am right there with you that it, it makes so much sense as to why people with chronic illnesses could so easily become in just this horrible situation. Did it change your leadership style or how you approached um, life, work life with your staff? Absolutely. I mean, I, I've always been a big proponent of work-life balance um, in work, but even more so, you know, having a chronic condition, I, there, it just became so important and apparent to me, like the importance of that work-life balance and making sure that we practice what we preach as, as mental health professionals, as leaders in the field, we are always talking about self-care, self-care, self-care with our staff too. That's, and it's something that organizations will sometimes like to pride themselves on of like, oh yeah, we, you know, we, we preach self-care, like we talk to our staff about self-care, but do we honor that self-care for our staff? And that's something that I tried to really instill with my staff is like, you do need to take care of yourself. Yes, obviously, like there are, you know, there are things we need to, that need to get done, you know, in, in the office. If you're not able to do them, then we, then you let me know, like, let's have that open dialogue and we will come up with solutions or find, you know, if you need to take time off, we'll find coverage, we'll figure this out. But you, if you're not able to be there 100% for our patients because of your conditions, like you need to take care of yourself first so that you can take care of others. Um, and so that, that was really um, important to me as a leader to instill that in my staff that, you know, there, there are definitely going to be days that with or without a chronic health condition that you're just not at your best. And if you can, you know, if you need support from us, from myself as your leader, I'm, I'm here for you. And if you need to take time to self-care, you know, I'm here for you as well. What does your self-care look like? For me, it is, um, you know, there, and honestly, at times it can be spending time with my kids, um, even though they, they're little and they can be a handful, um, just being home with them and spending that quality family time can be really important to me, um, as well as, you know, just my own me time. So having that balance um, when they're in bed at nights or, you know, they're occupied, um, taking time for myself, um, doing things like we actually moved into a new house last year or last actually June. Um, and it's something I always talk about people, you know, laugh about it with me, but I, we have a hot tub here in our new house. I love this hot tub and it is so great for my chronic pain. Um, I'm in it constantly. Um, and it just, it feels really good. I have a soaking tub and sometimes I'll take like a, a really nice long bath as well. Um, you know, just a lot of like, like pampering self-care kind of things, like pretending I'm at a spa, um, and, or going to get a massage, you know, if I, if I need to, um, or sometimes it's just really simple, like, you know, just, um, you know, watching a favorite TV show, a comfort show or a comfort movie that is just for me, not for my kids um, or my husband, but just something that I enjoy. Um, so that to me is self-care. Um, and I'm really, you know, trying to incorporate just more movement and walking, um, more exercise in my day, um, making sure that I'm, you know, allowing myself that space to, to provide, you know, good health for my body, um, eating a healthier diet, um, those things, you know, that, that to me is practicing self-care. 
those day-to-day things, what I'm hearing at the end of your, your self-care list, that's easy to glaze over, but to me, it sounds like a very important part are the self-care things that you do that you don't necessarily want to do in the moment, like going for that walk when it would be easier to go for a nap that you know your body needs it, like food prep. So you've got healthy meals set up for yourself through the week. Um, Even doctor's appointments, right? Like sometimes we don't want to, you know, we don't want to schedule that appointment. Those are one of those things like that self-care that's not all that pretty. It's not the glamorous spa day. It's, but it's needed. Like you need to go to that doctor's appointment and get yourself taken care of. Like I remember like at that time also, I finally made a a dentist cleaning and I hadn't had a cleaning in way too long just because the kids, you know, they, they, they came first and then work came first and everything else came first. And I forgot about me and taking care of like those little things. I just scheduled my cleaning two days Good. ago. <laughs> it's important. It is. It really is. Um, especially as a, as a mom with littles who has chronic illness, um, dental care becomes all of a sudden like really important for your overall health. Um, because things that, you know, my teeth that n- never deteriorated, never had problems throughout all of my life as my chronic illness, um, progresses, all of these other little aspects of my health that aren't directly linked, but it's all in my body. So they are yes. linked, um, kind of progress in their deterioration as well, unfortunately. And that's, that's how it goes. So making sure that I'm keeping up with dental care, making sure that I'm keeping up with eye exams, ugh, mm-hmm. all of those things becomes all the more important and it is self-care and it's not pretty. Right. Right. That's the not pretty side of the self-care that's needed and important for us. Yeah. Yeah. If you had someone like yourself sitting in front of you in 2020, this, a leader that was dealing with chronic health conditions that had chronic health conditions that knew what that journey was like, what do you think that leader, what advice would that leader have given you back in 2020? Mm -hmm. I, what I would have hoped is, you know, and, and I did receive this advice too from a leader that I, from a supervisor I had at that time when I disclosed what was going on was, you know, she also started to share her own chronic health conditions and um, what she was going through and surgery she had gone through and things like that. Um, and it was just, it was very um, eye-opening to, to hear a leader um, be vulnerable back and share what, you know, she had gone through um, as well as to, to give that, um, um, allowance to take care of myself, you know, to not just have a, a, a boss that says like, oh, I'm sorry to hear that, you know, if you need to take some PT, let me know, and then just keep moving. Um, but to like really sit with me and um, talk with me about it and ask how I'm doing um, and ask if, if I need anything um, and to really understand that, you know, there might be times that I'm not at my best and, and that I would be open and honest and let her know what, you know, what was coming up for me if I needed to take some time and that it was okay to take some time um, or to allow myself like to not be, you know, 100% and as fast as possible all the time. Um, and I think that was very freeing and you know, to know that that a leader was being human with me and understanding the humanity of like, we are all, we all have things, we all have things we're going through and yes, we're running a business and we have to focus on that as well as like who, who works in the business, humans and humans deal with human problems. So just having that humanity, I would hope that, you know, any leader would keep in mind that humanity piece of it when they're dealing with um, somebody that has a chronic health condition um, to keep in mind that, you know, their, their humanity comes first. All of that being said, if you were speaking to a new leader that was dealing with chronic health health conditions that wasn't in the most supportive environment, whether that was just the perception or they they really did not have someone that they could be vulnerable to, what advice would you give them? Sometimes when you get diagnosed with some of these chronic health conditions, you really have to kind of look, it it changes your lens and it really has you look at things in a very different view. Um, What are your what, what is most important in life? What are your priorities? And looking at, you know, how do I balance all of this? If I can do that where I'm at currently um, and still feel like I can balance that and, and practice self-care and be able to give myself that, then that's great. If I don't feel like I'll be able to do that in the environment that I'm at, maybe I need to 
you know, realign my values and relook at things and see like, is there a different fit for me? Um, and that's what I would impart to a, a new leader that's dealing with, you know, a new chronic health condition is sometimes th this can be life-changing and it can change the trajectory of where you're at. And being in a supportive environment is so important. Um, and if you don't have that supportive environment, maybe re-looking re at, you know, where you're at and, and is this the right fit for you? Don't take this on as this is a you problem. Yes, you're going through this, but that doesn't mean that you're a detriment to the company that you're working on. Maybe right. this is a sign that it's it's time to look for organizations where that norm that you put out there, humans deal with human problems. I love that. That that might be the uh, what someone with a chronic illness really needs to find that organization that holds that value. Absolutely. I 100% I agree with that, that, you know, it's, it's not internalized because it can be easily easy to internalize that. And I know I went through that in the early stages of um, getting diagnosed with this of like, oh my gosh, like, you know, and I, all these fears and questions, am I going to be able to do this? And and if I um, can't, does that make me less of a per, you know, less of a leader, less of, um, you know, the, the employee that I know I can be the leader that I know I can be. Um, but to really be able to like, take it outside of yourself and realize like, there's, this is no moral failing. This is nothing you did. Like this just happened. Um, and, you know, really looking at the environment and whether it's, a, it's still a good match If things in your life change, you have to look at, is it still a good match for what I'm going through? And if not, maybe I need to realign my values. I love that. I love that. If there is a leader out there that's struggling with this, that's struggling with having a chronic illness and leading teams at the same time, are you comfortable with them reaching out to you? Absolutely. Absolutely. They, they can definitely reach out to me, share what's going on with them. I'm happy to share what's going on with me. I'm very open about it because I want people to, to know like that they're not alone if they're going through it. And I've had other you know friends on social media reach out to me um, and send me messages or write in my posts like, I go through this. I have this. I had no idea um, until I wrote my post and they started sharing back. So I'm happy to share and um, to listen and just be an ear um, and, and provide any support that is needed. Oh, that's wonderful. I'll put your contact information in the description for this video. Absolutely. I would love that. Okay. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy life, directing your teams, seeing clients, all of that to talk with us about this really important topic. I know that I feel um, less alone after having this conversation. So I know that there's people out there that are going to be listening to this, feeling the same way that they're not alone in the struggle. Thank you so much, Monica. Thank you, Christina, for inviting me to this. I really appreciate it. And I really enjoyed talking with you today.